Hi YouTube. Let's find out what we're going to discuss for today. Let's check our letter. Amino acid derivatives. Oy vey. Basically, we're trying to commit to memory first eight pages 94 through 96. Knowing these pathways will help understand some of the relevant disease processes and it'll help us navigate through higher order questions. And they love to ask stuff like beyond just knowing what the disease is, they're going to ask you what amino acids are implicated. So let's begin. Glutamine plus aspartate gives us pyrimidine. You need strong glutes and a uh, donkey to lug all the stones up to the top of a pyramid. Glutamine, glutamine plus aspartate plus glycine gives us purine. Remember that pure is gold demonic? Great, because alchemy is complex and we're going to need more ingredients to make gold than we need for pyramids. Arginine has three possible end products. Arginine plus aspartate gives us urea. Remember, Archie's asparagus causes stinky urine. Arginine plus glycine plus SAM makes creatinine. SAM and Archie created a glitch. Arginine with BH4 as a cofactor makes nitrous oxide. B4, Archie got high on laughing gas. He's clean now. Uh, maybe the mnemonics will help, maybe they won't. Glutamate has two end products. If we use B6 as a cofactor, we'll get GABA. And if we don't, we make glutathione. Remember, once a G, always a G. Because glutamate makes all the G derivatives. Glycine and succinyl-CoA, with B6 as a cofactor, will make porphyrin, which later eventually becomes heme. And this is the subject of a whole nother video. Histidine uses B6 to make histamine. That one's easy. Tryptophan has two main pathways. Now, if we use B6 and B2, we'll make niacin, which can in turn be used to make NAD plus and NADP plus. If we use B6 and BH4, we'll make serotonin, from which we can derive melatonin. Remember that serotonin is our happy neurotransmitter, and BH4 sounds like before. So we can remember the good old times when we were happy and could get enough sleep at night. All right, now onto the Goliath for today. It's the catecholamine pathway. And this one, I took the trouble of drawing out, so you can see. We start with phenylalanine, phenylalanine right at the top. I'll move this up here. So we'll start with phenylalanine right at the top. And using BH4, we turn that into tyrosine. Now, tyrosine can become thyroxine, or it can become homogentistic acid, which has its own pathway. Or we can use BH4 again to turn it into DOPA. DOPA can become melanin. Or we can use B6 to turn it into dopamine. Dopamine will use vitamin C to become norepinephrine. Norepinephrine will use SAM to become epinephrine. So there's a tricky thing. Well, there's a few enzymes that we'll need to know. Phenylalanine, and the enzymes, I, you can see them, they're outlined in a little weird bubble. So phenylalanine uses phenylalanine hydroxylase, right up in step one. If we knock that out, we'll get phenylketonuria. Now, Dopa to melanin uses tyrosinase. If we knock that out, we'll get albinism. And now we can see the homogentistic pathway way over here. Homogentistic acid you becomes, um, it, it uses homogentisate oxidase to make malleolacetoacetic acid, which then becomes fumarate and can ent enter the Krebs cycle. So if we knock out homogentistic oxidase, we'll get alcaptanoyuria. So real quick, let's talk about these three diseases. I found them really daunting, but they're not that bad once you get through them. 
Now, albinism is the most obvious of the three. We all know about that. Now, Captain Yuya is funky, but it's got to try it. So, number one, we get blue, black, sclera, and connective tissue. Two, we get urine that turns black or, well, dark after it's exposed to the air. And lastly, we get three, debilitating joint pain. And so this is autosomal recessive, and even though it's genetic, it actually presents around middle age. Now, phenylketonuria is also autosomal recessive. We screen, we actually screen three days after birth. Now, we, if you have this disease, you can't process phenylalanine, so we accumulate phenyl ketones. There's a, there's a bunch of these, but they all have the word, you know, they all have phenyl in them, so you'll be able to recognize it. Now, this causes intellectual disability, growth, stunting, seizures, fair skin, eczema, and a musty or mousy body odor. Now, because this is an accumulation of an aromatic compound. Tyrosine then becomes an essential compound, right, since it's the next thing and we can't convert. So we need tyrosine in the diet, and we treat this condition by avoiding phenylalanine altogether, including aspartame, the sweetener, because that gets metabolized to phenylalanine, and by eating more tyrosine containing foods, because we, we need it now. Uh, in, there's also a condition called maternal PKU. And the kid gets born with all the same stuff, but they also have microcephaly and congenital heart defects. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.